We're going to use a vinyl record as our example for rotational motion in this video. How are we going to describe the position of this record over time? This might seem like a weird question, because the record seems to be staying in one position. But we can see the record is moving somehow, so we're still going to use the term position in order to describe what about the object is changing over time. It might make more sense to say we're describing how the orientation of the record is changing, but we'll find that using the term position is useful, because it ties into the rest of kinematics and the way we describe motion. So let's say the record starts in this position. Then the record rotates and ends up in this position. How can we describe these two positions and track the motion of the record? It's a little hard to see how the record is moving, so let's place a line on it from the center to the edge. Here's that same motion again. The record starts out in this position, then rotates to this position. What's the difference between these two positions? Well, we can see that the record and the line rotated, and there's an angle between the line at the first position and the line at the second position. In this case, the angle between these two lines is 45 degrees. For rotational motion, we're going to be using angles to describe how an object is moving, which is why we call this the angular position, and we're using the angular description of motion. When we added this line on the record, it didn't actually matter where we put it. If we add another line, we see that both lines rotate 45 degrees. In fact, any line on this record will rotate the same amount, because the entire object is rotating together. It's easier to show what's happening with just one line, but keep in mind that when we talk about the angular position of this line, we're actually representing the angular position of the entire record. So how can we track the angular position of this line? Like with other types of motion, we're going to use an axis. We represent angular position using the Greek letter theta, which is commonly used for angles. For now, we're going to use the unit of degrees. As usual, we establish a zero point for our axis, and we measure the angular position of the line on the record relative to that zero point. Here, the angular position of the record would be 30 degrees. And here, the position would be 240 degrees. Remember, you can think of the angular position of the record as the angle between this line at the zero point and the line at the new position. Even if that angle is greater than 180 degrees, we still measure it the same way. What would be the angular position of the record if it rotates a full revolution? There's 360 degrees in a circle, so if we follow the record's motion from the start, then the final position would be 360 degrees. What happens if the record keeps rotating? Here's a graph of the angular position versus time. Just like with circular motion, the angular position doesn't reset back to zero keeps increasing as the record rotates. And what if the record rotates the other way? With any type of motion, we establish a positive and negative direction when we set up our axis. Counterclockwise is considered the positive direction, and clockwise is considered the negative direction. The record can rotate as far as it wants in either direction, and we measure its angular position relative to the zero point that we established. Now, let's talk about units. So far, we've been using degrees, but there's a few other units we need to know. First, the SI unit for angular position is radians, R-A-D for short. Just like how there's 360 degrees in a circle, there's two pi radians in a circle. We learned about radians in the basics section, so watch that video if you haven't already. So if one circle is two pi radians, we can break that into fractions and label this axis. Here we're dividing the circle into 12 parts, so each segment adds pi over six radians. This might seem like a weird way to measure things, but just know that like degrees, a radian is a unit that describes an angle, 
and there are two pi radians in one circle. We can also describe the angular position in terms of revolutions or cycles. If an object rotates all the way around, that's one revolution or one cycle. And we can label the axis using fractions. So those are the units we use to describe angular position. And we can use those relationships if we need to convert between different units. Now let's quickly cover angular displacement. Like with other types of motion, angular displacement, delta theta, is the change in angular position when an object rotates, which equals the final angular position minus the initial angular position. So if this record starts at an initial position of 60 degrees, and then rotates to a final position of 210 degrees, then the angular displacement of the record would be 210 degrees minus 60 degrees, which equals 150 degrees. Like position, the SI unit for angular displacement is radians.